Welcome to this free anaesthetic tutorial on the brachial plexus. Today we will cover an introduction, a description and focused anatomy for the anaesthetist. We will describe how the brachial plexus anatomy is relevant to regional anaesthesia. We will draw the brachial plexus in less than a minute so that if you get asked about it in your OSCE Viva, you'll have a system. We will then label what we have drawn, we will summarise and we will do questions at the end. Introduction. The brachial plexus is a collection of roots formed by the anterior rami of C5 to T1. It undergoes a number of anatomical divisions as the plexus progresses distally, and this can be remembered using the mnemonic Remember to Drink Cold Beer, which stands for roots, trunks, divisions, cords, and branches. The five roots emerge from the intervertebral foramina, and they are sandwiched between the anterior and middle scalene muscles. The roots lie in a fibro-fatty space, which can be injected with local anaesthetic. The most common form of block used by the anaesthetist to target the roots is the interscalene block. The C5 and C6 roots then go on to form the upper trunk, the C7 root forms the middle trunk, and the C8 and T1 roots form the lower trunk, and their trunks emerge across the base of the posterior triangle and then across the first rib. The most common type of block used by the anaesthetist to target the trunks is the supraclavicular block. The trunks then join up to form divisions, and each trunk splits into an anterior and posterior division, so there are six divisions in total. Once the plexus reaches the axilla, the divisions form the cords, and the cords are named by their position relative to the axillary artery. The lateral cord is the fused anterior division of the upper and middle trunks, and this covers the roots C5 to C7. The medial cord is the anterior division of the lower trunk, and this covers C8 and T1 roots. And the posterior cord is formed by the union of the posterior divisions of all three trunks, and this covers the roots C5 to T1. From this, the five branches are formed, the musculocutaneous, axillary, radial, median, and ulnar. There isn't a very good mnemonic that you can use to remember these, so I always just think of the term MAMU. We can then draw the brachial plexus, and here's a video of how I did it. We label our roots, trunks, divisions, cords and branches on the top of the paper, then C5 to T1 on the left hand side of the paper. We then draw an arrow that covers C5 and C6 and an arrow for C8 T1 in line with roots. We then draw three lines to cover the rest of the paper. Under divisions we draw an X and then we draw a spare. And the way that you remember this is that the strike always is higher than the spare. Under branches we draw a wave from the bottom line, a wave from the middle line, and then from the top we draw another wave that comes down from the top line to the first wave that we drew. We then need to add in some extra nerves. Now labelling those nerves, the nerves that come under the roots are the dorsal scapular nerve and the long thoracic nerve. The nerves that come under the trunks are the suprascapular nerve and the nerve to subclavius. There are no individual nerves that come from the divisions, so we move on to the cords. Here on the top line we have the lateral pectoral and on the bottom line we have the medial pectoral, the medial cutaneous nerve of the arm and the medial cutaneous nerve of the forearm. On the middle line we have the upper subscapula, the thoracodorsal and the lower subscapula. Under the branches we have the marmu branches, musculocutaneous, axillary, radial, medial and ulna. To summarise, the brachial plexus can be remembered using remember to drink cold beer and marmu. It is an important plexus, it is an important piece of anatomy that is relevant to regional anaesthesia of the upper limb. It commonly comes up in the OSCE Viva and it is good practice to be able to draw. Questions. Name the nerve identified on each of these five slides. Thank you for listening. To this free anaesthetic tutorial. Why not post your answers in the comments section below? If you enjoyed our resources, please give us a subscription on YouTube to encourage us to do more of these videos. Please comment and suggest videos that you think might be useful. We also have a free anaesthetic tutorial flashcard system which we've developed. You can catch this on Instagram searching for free anaesthetic tutorials and we're also on Facebook as Fred Anaesthetic. Thanks again for watching. See you now.